Good afternoon and welcome to A Different Kind of Woman, a show that tackles pressing issues to us ladies. And today's show is no different at all because it's all about you. We are addressing your concerns. Every single week people email us and they ask us about different things happening in their lives. And on this week's show we're going to be answering them. So stick with us. But first, let's see what else is coming up. That's right, this Sunday is our Agony Aunt show. Every so often we like to speak about the things that are going on in your lives. And of course, I'm not by myself, I'm your host Shireen, but I'm joined in the studio by the lovely Gemma. Hi. And Maria. Hi. How are you doing, ladies? Good, great. Does it, feel, does it feel like ages? It does feel like ages. Yeah. <laughs> we were Gosh. talking about it just before the show, we were talking about how you know, when I walked in, it just felt like I haven't been here for ages. Where have you been? We missed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> What's been going on with you ladies then? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if nothing's happening with Maria, planning, planning a wedding, I'd say, yeah. So, yeah. It's huge, working. that would be. Yeah, uh, you see, so there you are. I wanted Gemma to talk. She's taking the number, no problem. <laughs> Very important issue. Yeah. We'll give you some tips after, Gemma. Yeah. Don't worry, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, today's our Agony Aunt show. And this show is very special to us. I, I really love these kind of shows because, you know, us women, we seem to be always out there, but, you know, not every time we can open up to those that we love about things that are really going on inside. Yeah. And this is so wonderful because, you know, in a kind of private space, us ladies, we have this kind of environment to be able to email through and say, you know what, watch your show, you've tackled this issue, and to be honest with you, I've been going through it. How would you deal with it? Yeah. And, you know, as we always say, we are no professionals. We are not professionals at all, and actually, little young Gemma doesn't seem like she's got much to say, <laughs> but actually, you'll be amazed at what we have been through. Yeah, life And we experience. love to expose ourselves. We love to tell people, that this is what we've been through. So, you know, although we're not professional, this is what we did, and it helped. So, exactly. are you guys ready? We're ready. ready. Yeah. Right. Yes. First of all, let's break it up with our favourite red and green card game. Okay, for those who don't know, we always love to play our signature game. And with this show, I'm going to be asking you about what you're afraid to say and what you're not afraid to say. If you're not afraid to say, I'll give you a scenario and you're not afraid to say, then you hold up your, green, your red card, sorry. You say, no, I'm not afraid to say. If you say, I am afraid to say, then you hold up your red card. And of course, I'll be asking you why. Are you ladies ready? We're ready. ready. All right, first question. Let's get to it, shall we? So, are you afraid to say if you discover your friend's partner is cheating on them? So, what, what, how did it get red to so say no? So, if you're not afraid, you hold up that red card. If you are afraid, <laughs> you went up, hold up the green. Now, I think, Maria, you were first. So, why, would, why are you not afraid? Um... I'd like to, I like to believe that I'm a genuine friend and mm. I think a genuine friend will really, would not want her friend to have to go through this. Mm -hmm. I guess because it's happened to me mm -hmm. and I didn't think that people were being honest with me. I think it's something they could have saved me a lot of pain and, you know, had they come to me sooner to tell yes. me what they found out. But unfortunately, I had to go quite years Years. of it before I actually found out the truth. Oh so gosh. yeah, I think to be a, a, a good friend, you know, you really need to be honest with that person. And I'm sure afterwards you probably couldn't even trust those friends. Well, I, I, well, you know, I mean, I, no, you don't, you can't. Mm. You can't expect them to, you know, if, if there's anything else going on, that they know about. No, I wouldn't trust them to come and tell me at all. Gosh, it must be very painful, extreme. I mean, there's the pain mm. of knowing that your partner's cheating you and there's the pain of knowing your friends knew and didn't say anything. Exactly, exactly. Yes. exactly. yes. I don't think a friend is just about going out for tea, coffee, cinema, etc. A friend is to tell you the truth. Sometimes, yeah. you know, even my friends tell me the truth about who I am, you know, and it does hurt sometimes. You don't mm. want to necessarily hear mm. it. But then you know that they're a good friend. If they tell you your faults, your mistakes, I would expect if they ever thought that I was with somebody that was no good or doing something, because it's humiliating. Mm -hmm. Why would I hear it from someone else? I would want to hear it from a friend. Just before, I, before we go to the next question, did you ever ask yourself, Maria, is it, is it because they felt that you, you, know, you were not ready to hear it? Maybe they thought you was, they were safeguarding you in some way? Um, maybe with some of them, they probably thought, yeah, let's not hurt her. Mm -hmm. And I think some of them also probably think, you know, 
It's not their place. Okay. Mm, that's a point. Mm. You know, because I guess as well, as a friend, you've got this whole moral thing. You know, if, if someone is in a family and they've got children, etc., you know, because there's different types of cheating as well. So I get your point. Because I guess if you if you hear something which is a rumour, you think, oh, I don't want to break up her marriage, etc. But, you know, I would just think, you know what, I will tell you and then what you do with that information is up to you. If you decide to continue, I won't judge you, I'll still be your friend mm. if you want to continue in that relationship, but I think it's best to tell. But I know why people do think about yeah. family and, mm. you know, children, etc. Yeah, but yeah. the truth hurts, but at the end of the day, once you, you, you know, at least you are prepared when you actually have to come face to face with it, you yeah. know, you're prepared. Yeah. But it's, right. it's having to, you know, catch the person and find and out yourself. that way, mm. I think that's more painful. Absolutely, more painful, Have you been yeah. through something like this? Have you got any experience to share? Comments at dkw.me. We would love to hear from you. Okay, so next question. Are you afraid to say if your partner is letting themselves go? Gemma, oh. she didn't even finish the question. I didn't, I didn't finish the question. She really put red up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Think about it. Are you afraid to say if your partner is letting themselves go? Do you no. know what? Actually, I'm kind of on the fence, actually. I'm a, I'm Jennifer you can't do Jennifer today, today I'm no. I'm telling you. <laughs> Go on, Jim, tell us why. Because, um, it's funny, because when you first said it, I thought, yeah, no, definitely. If, if my partner is letting themselves go, I would have to tell them. But then there's other things, like, you know, if you gain weight, etc. Then I thought, <laughs> in my situation, do I really want to know all the time? Oh, you've gained, you, oh, you've gained a few pounds. Sometimes you know yourself and yes. you just don't want to hear it from another person. <laughs> oh, you get, and, it, and it's how many times you've got to say it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you know, we all know when we gain weight because our jeans don't fit anymore. Our jeans don't fit, the dress is too tight etc so sometimes you don't want to hear it mm. so I just thought oh if my partner was I'm just thinking about my fiance if he was gaining weight like you know since we've been together we've both gained a bit of weight am I going to tell him no because I don't want to tell me <laughs> you have now I see you, you have now <laughs> you've told him now yeah. there you go <laughs> told the world <laughs> what about you Maria <laughs> what about me well um I think it's, it's good to say it because they might not even realise themselves mm. and it's also how you say things. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's it's a true. good point. You yeah. know, I think it's, that's very important as well because you can really put someone's self-esteem, their confidence, you yes. know, everything they thought about themselves, yeah. you know, you could actually put that person down. But I think it's very important how you say things, but it's very important to say it also because they might not be aware of it themselves. Yes. And, you know, better tell them now while you <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not out of hand. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true, it's true. Because I had a friend that let herself go. Yeah. And I remember in the beginning, it was like, okay, maybe she's not putting on some makeup. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Then she stopped doing her hair properly. And then I was like, okay, okay. And then she started wearing the same clothes all the time. And I thought, no, this is out of hand now. Like, you, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, what is wrong with you? And then we realised that it was a deeper issue. She was yes. going through some, a really bad patch in her mm -hmm. life. And as friends, we all told her. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you don't look good, you know, everyone's going to think it and say it. Yes. But, you know, as a friend, I should tell you, so if it's my partner, I always see my partner as a reflection of me as mm. well. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So I would expect that he'd have a standard of what he wants me to look like. Mm. So I have that standard too. Because mm. when they see him, they see me. Indeed. You know? I think there's those acceptable boundaries of letting go. Like you was, I think, you know, if little, you see a, few a little pounds, thing, a few pounds yeah. here, it's kind of that acceptable boundary. But I think when it goes too far, you kind of also know, your conscious kind of tells you, okay, no, it's really too much now. Yeah. I've got to say something. Yeah. yeah, because also it could be a deeper issue, you mm. know? Like, for example, if someone's not taking care of themselves or or, you know, like, for example, with the friend that I had, I could only see the outside. It was like the layer. Yes. Why is she not doing her hair, her makeup? But then it was almost leading her down to the path of depression mm. because she was going through such a bad time in her life. Mm -hmm. And if I never said anything, I wouldn't be able to help her with the deeper issue. Yeah. So sometimes you just see the external, you see the outside, but you can actually help that person with the deeper issue. Indeed. You know, and sometimes um, with men, they don't always communicate what they what they're going through yes. so maybe you just talking about that like oh you know you have gained a bit of weight or you aren't taking care why aren't you shaving like you used to it might lead to something else just never know <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go to the next one are you afraid to say if you think someone you know is making a bad decision Ooh. sometimes Gemma is saying green finally the green card has gone up what about you Maria that's, that's very difficult this one I think can I can I just <laughs> there is no such thing on the show. We are yes or no women. <laughs> oh dear. Because that, that would be my answer for I'm it. telling you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just um, the game. Right. I think it, it just depends. 
I mean, how serious it is, mm. okay. If it's something really serious that I know is going to affect the person's, uh, you know, life, mm -hmm. you know. But I think I, I would, I would say. You would say. I would say. Okay. You know. But I mean, I wouldn't. You know. Again, it's how you say things. Yeah. It's how you put things. Mm. You know. I think that's a very important thing of how you know how you how say things, yeah, so how you come across. Yeah. What about you, Jimmy? You're saying no. You're afraid. Y yeah, because I have learned with experience over time that sometimes people are not ready to hear it, mm -hmm. do you know? And it depends on the relationship you have with the person. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, again, I've got uh, all these situations I feel like I've been through. <laughs> I had a friend that was, and a, a big decision was marriage, and she was ready yes. to marry this person. And, you know, I knew that the person wasn't right, but she wasn't ready to hear from me that that person wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was just, there were a lot of red flags and a lot of his friends were saying, like, you know, he's not a, a good character, etc. And I did try to address it once and say, look, do you really think that you're making the right decision? Maybe you should wait, you know, have a long engagement, etc. And she was set of getting married, mm. I'm getting married within months. And she wasn't ready to hear it. Mm. So I was like, OK, I'll support you. And mm. in my head, I thought I'll be a friend now. And I'll be a friend when it doesn't work out. And thank mm -hmm. God, in the end, it didn't, like, things didn't work out. So she didn't get to marry him in the end. But that was a huge decision in her life. And I was, I, I just thought, oh, I don't want to lose my friend. Because if I keep saying it, constantly, he's not the right one for you, he's not the right one. If things did fall apart, I always thought she wouldn't want to come back to mm -hmm. me and talk to me about That's it. That's that's quite deep because the, the truth is sometimes you do need to make that that, that decision whether you're willing to risk your friendship by yeah. being so honest and yeah. open and telling them something to warn them or if you're just going to tell them and, and take that risk. I mean, at least you've got to keep your friendship and I believe even pick up the pieces afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then again, yeah, there are times that if you don't say something, your friend could make that or someone that you love can make a terrible, terrible move. Yeah. yeah. And there's no coming back from that. Yeah, definitely. For some people. Yeah. Okay, so it's a bit of a tricky yeah. one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Right. When it comes to family for me, though, I tell my family the truth all the time. Because mm. we are the type, that's the type of family that yes, we are. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sort of family. And, you know, at the end of the day, with family, truthfully, I've realised over time that my family's going nowhere. Yes. So, therefore, I tell them the truth. And I constantly, if I see that you're making some, a silly decision, I will always always tell you the truth but that's family. very com good communication yeah. in family though. yeah and that's so important isn't it's it so, so that's, that's really good yeah <laughs> I like that. well it's not always so beautifully when it comes out but yeah. you know it's one of those things you have to handle Just isn't deal it? With it okay let's go to a viewer's question how to decide what to do with my life after after university because right now i'm like a bit lost but yeah, yeah. oh my gosh poor girl and how many people are in her situation <laughs> it's like you've gone to you've gone to you're in the education system for so long you go to university with all these high hopes and then suddenly you come out and there's kind of like very hard to get a job and you don't know where to go what does she do ladies mm. i'll throw this one at you guys i know that was me actually <laughs> that was me i literally went through the whole education system not mm. knowing what i wanted to do where i wanted to be and i tried so many i was like oh is it hr is it pr do you want to get into media do you want to be a lawyer i did a law degree i did i did forensic science degree so the thing is <laughs> as you can see and i remember even when i was choosing my a levels my, my teacher was like, oh, the A-levels you've chosen seems like you're all over the place. And I was like, yeah, because I have no idea what I want to do yeah. and where I want to be. And then I went through a period where I just wanted to be like a footballer's wife and just have someone take care of me and do mm -hmm. charity work. So I think it's really, really hard. Um, I, I would say just try to do what you enjoy, mm -hmm. first of all, and just to see what you enjoy. And then, and then I realised that I enjoyed people. So that's when I went into mm -hmm. HR. Um, but then after that, I moved into TV. Sometimes mm -hmm. life just takes you... I'd say that if you do a degree, like try to do something that you enjoy and then try to do different jobs like that according to what you enjoy. And mm. then you will eventually find your path, what you like and what you don't. Because when I did forensic science, I did think I, I, I would like it. But then when it was all the physics and the maths and so on, I thought, oh, I really hate this. Mm. And that's why I changed and I switched to law. And I thought, mm. and my law degree does, it does help now, mm. like, you know, in what I do. But I realised, oh, I wasted a lot of time doing forensics. But I don't regret it because... I thought I would want to do it, and I would probably never know mm -hmm. if I didn't do you know, it. Now, many graduates they have the like the, the whole CV of all the time they've been at school, and, and nowadays people are looking at more at, at experience. They want the education, yeah, but they need yeah. the experience too. So, my advice is always to um, for people, especially graduates, to try to get as much experience as possible. If Definitely. it's free voluntary experience yeah. work, it's double here, double there. I mean, you get lots of skills, yeah. and also many companies who have volunteers are always looking for people to recruit. Definitely. And if they see you in 
action, you're more likely to get really good positions yeah. and all very good references. So yeah. it's always good to get as much ex work experience as soon as you get out of uni. And, yeah. and, and sure, and the important thing is not to give up. Yeah. You know, don't lose hope because some, something always, always turn up. You know, yes. it's very important for that person to just keep going and maybe go and study something else. I don't know, but just not give up. Okay. All right. Mm. Love that, Maria. Okay, we've got one more question, which is, this is one came in from email. Are you ready? It says, I am a married person, but my husband, um, my husband is always flirting with my friends. He is a caring husband and a great man in so many ways, but he's constantly chatting up my friends. I also hear him on the phone to other women. What should I do? I think she needs to set some standards and some boundaries in her relationship. And I know it's so difficult to say because obviously I would say that he's gotten to this point because she hasn't. She's been okay with it. It's mm -hmm. been acceptable. Mm -hmm. And I think that in relationships you do need to set boundaries of what is fine and what is not. Mm -hmm. And ideally it would be good to do that at the start and then to, to maintain those. But if she hasn't, I think she needs to have a conversation with him. First, it's communication. Yes. First, she needs to talk to him, no matter how mm. difficult that conversation is going to be. Mm -hmm. And then set some boundaries, like, this is not okay. He might not even think that he's flirting, because yes. that's another point as mm. well. Like, you know, I always say when I'm on this show that I don't, I never think that men and women should be really good friends. Mm. But then my partner doesn't have that, that view. So what we did was we set a boundary. For me, it was like, I'm not okay with you going to be at other people's houses that is of the opposite sex or talking to him, going to cinema, etc. And then he got it, he got my point, mm -hmm. and then I got his point. And sometimes what's a boundary for you is not a boundary for another person. So he might think, oh, I'm being so nice to her friends, why doesn't she appreciate it? Yes. She's like, why is, she so, why is he so close? So I think you just need to communicate and then he knows what's not okay for you. Lovely. The other well, thing well, as well, Shereen, can I just quickly say, she can needs you say to check that she's... Break, oh, is there a break? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go for a quick break and we'll be back <laughs> soon to hear more of what Jim has to say. Maria and myself stick with us. <laughs> My lifestyle before coming to the church was quite a reckless one. I, was, I used to go out clubbing every night. I used to lie in bed most of the day. I wasn't working and I hadn't worked for about 15 years. My lowest point was when I stood on the edge of King's Cross Underground Station and I really wanted to jump in the underground because I was just feeling so low, so depressed. I've been free from this addiction. It must be about 16 years now. I don't go to clubs anymore. I'm not addicted anymore. Welcome back and today we are discussing the issues that are concerning you. I'm here with Gemma and Maria and I've got another very pressing question for you. But first of all, let's have a look at this viewer's question. Um, should I fit in or should I be different? Oh, I love that question. <laughs> should I fit in or should I be different? Hmm. Maria, be different girl. <laughs> be different, be Stand different. Out. That's it, be sorted. Different. Just be different. <laughs> <laughs> should I fit in or should I be different? This is such a great question. I think, I think, you know, I mean, if you have a group of friends and they kind of like all have the same character and everything, and I think it gets a bit boring. Mm. But if you try to be different, you know, you are coming in and doing something different. You're not doing the same thing everybody else. And mm. I think that's where it kind of like get more excited. And 
Oh, be different, definitely. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> be different. I say fit in. <laughs> fit in from the <laughs> quite a controversial one. So, no, I just say, because Maria said be different, whatever she said, I'll say the opposite. <laughs> it depends on how different you want to be. Yeah. Some people want to be really rebellious and yes. then be a menace to society. You know, we don't need that. You know, if you're going to be different and inspirational, that would be great. But if oh, not, love forget it. it. I think that's a really nice way of summing yeah. up. If you, if you just, as long as you just stick to the law, you're fine. <laughs> Anything else? Be different. But then, Gemma, yeah. the difference is, is that you could be going in into a group of women that are really, like you say, those words, you know, yeah. like, you know. <laughs> but then, <laughs> being different, you can be going in and showing them a different kind of way, yes. a different kind of woman, yeah. you know, a different kind point. of attitude, yeah. a different kind of character. Yeah. So being different doesn't necessarily mean... Definitely. If you you're going to inspire, like Rosa Parks, she yes. looked like she was rebellious, but she knew it was a higher cause. Mm. And I think that if you're going to do something that is for a higher cause, or if you're trying to be inspirational, you know, if everyone's got in the rat race and doing a job and you're, you're saying, no, I'm going to start my own business, and then it's great to be different. I agree with you. You, you know, know, sometimes, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, people, they stick to what has always been done. Yeah. And that is not always beneficial. You know, yeah. so sometimes through fear, people don't want to be different, yeah. to make a difference, yeah. to make something better. If you, I like what you're saying, Gemma. If you're going to do something different to better people or bring people to a higher stand, that takes a lot of guts. It, it takes does. encouragement and it takes breaking the mould. Exactly. And many people who are so used to fitting in are not going to like it. Exactly. But you know what? If you're going to do it, it's for a better cause. Go for it. Yeah. In no sense, I think, yeah, defo, be yeah, different. Put self-preservation aside. Put self-preservation aside. Sometimes um, people don't even want to challenge what is always done and it's yeah. not necessarily the right thing that is done but because they don't want to put themselves at risk they say oh yeah. no it's fine I'll just I'll just be quiet and, and deep down they don't believe in it exactly so now we're on both we're on the same side yeah yeah <laughs> there this we is go. a camera Amazing. moment okay <laughs> Gemma you've got a very deep deep question I'd like for you to read it out and let's see how we can help this lady all right so this is quite a long one how do I handle this high maintenance friend I've grown to resent my friend and I have had boundary issues from the beginning. In the beginning of our friendship, I wanted nothing to do with her because she seemed to be a much... No, she seemed to take, be taken advantage of the fact that I had a car and could drive her around. Wow. She assured me this wasn't the truth and eventually we got very close. However, the problems didn't end there. She constantly has no money and is perfectly fine using mine to the point where I feel like I can't go shopping or grab a bite to eat with her because one, she probably won't have any money for herself and two, if she doesn't, um, but I can't afford to buy hers, um, she'll make comments like, that looks so good, or I'm so hungry, to which I feel awkward and obligated to share or buy her stuff. Wow! <laughs> you know, that's no friend, that's a gold digging friend. Is, 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 is there more part of that question? There is more of it, there ahead. is more. I thought it was over, but there's more. <laughs> she said, I'm 25, living with my mother, so I really don't have much to offer. Another problem we've had is unequal expectations. Mm. She'll borrow clothing and jewellery without asking, return it months later or not at all, only when I take it from her on specifically or specifically ask for it back. On multiple occasions, she thinks I've given her certain items when I've said um, she can only borrow them. It's unequal, though, because I never borrow her things. My room is basically her closet. She is forever needing rides or in some horrible emergency where she needs to be picked up ASAP and expects me to get her there even in the late hours. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm tired of constantly being on call, having her expect me to be on her time, giving her way to... Too, giving her way too much and receiving very little in return. The funny thing is, I've brought this all up to her in the past and nothing's changed. It's eating me up inside and causing me distress. What do you think, ladies? Wow! Oh, two words, two words. Go on, Maria. Don't want to hear them. Ditch her. Ditch her. Get yourself another friend. Ditch her. No. <laughs> No, actually, yeah. oh. yeah. we were laughing because, but this is actually a real life situation. It's happened, and you know, it's amazing how this this often does happen in some friend, so called friendships. Yeah, because this is not a friendship. This is th that girl has got some, she's found something great. Yeah, yeah in definitely. Her. I think she's you know she's got to the point now where I think maybe 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 you know maybe her friend has probably given in to so much. Yeah, and now it's got to the point now where she's actually taking the friend well. She is taking the friend for granted. But um, I think, first of all, it's very important to find out why she is, you know, she's behaving she's in that so way. Clean. I mean, she's still living at home with her parents and um, 
you know, so which means that she probably doesn't have any bills. She probably doesn't have all, all these things to take care of. Mm -hmm. So, and it's very important. Okay, there, she may have an issue there. Yeah. You know, obviously she has an issue. Yeah, indeed. She may. She has an issue yeah. there. But I think. Okay, being a good friend now, try to understand her first. Mm -hmm. Understand where she's coming from. Understand why she's doing the things she's doing. Mm -hmm. Who the, the, the friend you know, that's the friend been, taken, been advantage taken advantage. She has to uh, No, the, 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 the one that's been given, oh, okay. maybe it's good for her to find out what mm -hmm. is going on, what is happening, mm -hmm. you know, because there, there's obviously an issue there. And I don't know, maybe she might be able to help her, understand what she's doing, make her see, you know, I mean, if she... I don't know if she can see what she's doing or not, but um, it has been, it seems like it's something that's been going on for a while because mm. so many things has happened, mm -hmm. as you've been saying, Gemma. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, find out, find out why she's behaving in that way. What mm -hmm. do you reckon, Gemma? I think you should, I think that, I don't know, I know it sounds harsh, I think that you teach people how to treat you, mm. and I think that this person that's written into us, as hard as it may um, sound for her, she's actually made herself a victim because she's given in so many times. Mm -hmm. And if you've spoken to, because at the end of the day, if you've got a friend and you feel like this is not okay, mm -hmm. but you still turn up when she wants you to turn up, you give her money when she, when you say that you don't have it, but she's like, please, you know, you, you're constantly feeding that. Mm -hmm. So she never, she's never teaching her something different. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you haven't got money all the time, then I'd be a friend and say, okay, why don't we get you a job? Mm -hmm. Right, let's, look, <laughs> let's get your CV together. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're always going to be there to bail her out no matter what you say your actions speak louder if you're there always to bail her out then why should she change you know you there's, think about a, it? There's, a, there's such a thin line between tough love and real love when you have a friend yeah and then when you have a friend that you feel sorry for her Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot, you know, in friendships where you just mm -hmm. feel sorry for the person. Mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to save the person. Yeah. It's kind of like in a relationship where you have those women who constantly try to save their partners. Their partners are no good. Yeah. They treat them terribly, but they try, no, I'm going to save them. And this happens a lot in friendships. Yeah. And I think yes. that you've got a point there is, that, you know, there's a lot that the friend needs to change, but the change needs to happen is with this person that's writing in. Because, that's writing because in. some people do have this saviour complex, Shireen. At the savior end of the day, complex. why have you allowed yourself to get into such a situation that now you're resenting her yeah do you see what yes. I mean I think you need to start cutting these things off and it's tough loving obviously those those times you feel like oh I'm not being a great friend I feel sorry I feel sorry mm -hmm. that feels sorry it's not going to help you and it's not going to help your friend well Gemma did make a, a very good point because when you said you know show her a different kind of like yeah. ways show her show her a different path and and it is helping her you are trying to make her understand and you know and and stop what you're doing yeah stop giving yeah yeah stop, stop all giving. this giving yeah. because actually that is how you're going to because you're to not her. helping mm -hmm. that exactly. person exactly. you are not helping that person yeah. you are making that person get even worse and you know what what if there's i don't know if they're in a relationship but what happens when that, that friend gets a relationship and there's not enough time for you what's going to happen to the other person yeah she's depended on you for so long you're going to leave her like clueless of what to do that's gonna be another now this I don't feel this is a real friendship personally yeah, it's yeah. not it's not a real friendship no. it's, Both it's, parasitic. it's a one-way yeah. one friendship. friendship I believe it's a one-way friendship but also the other side of it is it depends on how you are in your family yeah. because you know maybe this this uh, person is the last in their family the baby yeah, and has always received everything indeed, so indeed. now with the friend she just wants to receive everything as well oh my god well this Tough. is how we've answered how would you yeah. answer please <laughs> email us comments at DKW now um Stay with us, we're going to go to a short break because we've got more deeper questions that we're going to be answering. Stick with us. Do the maths. Changing your life is not as simple as changing your hairstyle, your shirt or rearranging the furniture in your living room. You're talking about years of deep-rooted habits, behaviours and problems that are not going to change overnight. Many may say, think positively, but the trouble with that is that you can't do or change anything with just thoughts. But add action into the equation and the outcome can be different. Let's do the maths. Positive thinking plus action equals a change. Whatever it is, if the change is significant, if it's worthwhile, then it will have to take time, effort and homework from you.
Welcome back from the break. And before we go into more questions that you've been asking us, we're doing our best to answer, have a look at this very inspirational video. I grew up in a, a nice family. Um, at the beginning, I, I thought I had everything, you know, my mom and my dad were married for 12 years. Um, we had um, a home where I lived with my grandparents as well. They had a, a great business, everything was going well. But then in one year, everything just went wrong. Um, we lost the family business, my granddad passed away. And in that same year, my parents separated as well. It became even worse when I was abused as well because I thought definitely no one will have time to pay attention to me or to listen to what I'm going through. So I, you know, I just closed up altogether about what was happening to me. It got to the point where I started to contemplate killing myself as well. I wanted to end my life. The times that I, you know, on my way to school, I'd think of, you know what, let me just jump in front of the bus and end it all because no one would really care anyway. I was invited to the church by a close friend of mine after my first year in college and um, she grew up with me from a young age as well. She was one of the first friends that I met when I moved to the country and she saw everything that I was going through. At first I was a bit, bit skeptical because I thought how can, you know, how can everyone be so happy? You know, other young people like me are there and you know, they have a different outlook on their life and I wanted to have what they had. Um, I could see a change within myself. I became more confident. Um, I forgave my parents as well. I understood that, you know, in life, everyone will go through problems and people have different ways of dealing with it. And unfortunately, my parents had, to, they went for a divorce, but I learned that I can change it around. And so I started to um, speak to my dad more. I started to build a relationship with him. And the same with my mom. I started off, you know, speaking to her over the phone until eventually, and we started to have a close connection. Um, now I can say I'm a completely different person. I'm no longer depressed. I don't isolate myself. I don't find it hard to socialize. Um, I have a completely different outlook on life. I went from being the person who was very um, shy and closed. I wouldn't really want to take on any challenges. I started to, you know, to push myself to do more. Um, eventually I finished my studies, I also um, I got a great job, so I can truly say I found the change that I, I wanted to see and there's much more to come. <laughs> Shannon's story is so, so beautiful, it's wonderful, I mean you hear it at the beginning and it's kind of like oh daunting, it's like one problem after the next and yeah. how many times has this happened to us in life, it's like problems coming like pairs and threes and fours and fives and they all come at once try to knock you down. And it's just so beautiful to hear her end on a positive note. But how many people don't end on a positive Definitely. note, especially because they don't get the right advice exactly. or the right help? Mm -hmm. And you know, if you are someone that is like Shanna, who's been going through so many things and hasn't found this solution, at DKW, we have lots and lots of connections. We, we welcome you to visit our site at dkw.me, where you'll find many different professionals and people, um, organizations who are there to help. And please take advantage of those, okay? Now, first of all, let's go back to our our questions, shall we? And we've got one awesome video. How to earn more money? Yeah, uh, for some like extra income, for some uh, part-time jobs, something like that. <laughs> I'm always asking that question yes, myself. That's the question everyone wants to know. Isn't How it? do you earn extra money, ladies? Tips? How do I? Yeah, I, think she, I actually think she said it all, you know. <laughs> she answered her own question. She yeah. did, you know. Um, yeah, get an extra job. Um, yeah, get an extra job. <laughs> Just get an extra job. Get an extra job. Really. Got, <laughs> I mean, how do you make money? You have your job, you, you know, you, ha you have your steady job that you're doing. Okay, you, need, you, need, you know that you want to go on, on maybe two holidays mm -hmm. in that year. How are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. Get an extra job. Do something, find ways. You know. I think that, um, yeah. I think to be honest with you, that you're always gonna feel like in a job that I'm capped because you, you know, you sell the work of your hands for a set price yes. every month, and every month you get the same amount of money if you're in a salaried position. Um, and I think that the best way is probably to start off on your own because then it's limitless and it's very difficult, it's a lot of sacrifices involved, but I think that's. That's the key. If you really want a better quality of life, then you need to sacrifice. Those who have a better quality sacrifice more a lot of mm. the time. 
apart from those who get inheritances and, you know, born with a silver spoon in their mouth. But a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, for, for instance, they start off really in a difficult situation. Like my sister, mm. she had like one outfit all the time and mm. her shoes were like, had holes in it. But today she's completely independent, completely flexible mm. and she has a really good income. So, and, and it's limitless. Mm. And that's what inspired me. So I have my job, for instance, but I have something else on the side. Mm. So I don't just depend on my, on my salary. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I think that's quite important. And I think also sharing is very important because I think some people they said, okay, I'm going to start my own business, but yeah, great, great yeah. stuff. Everyone wants to start their own business and they're not having to, you know, depend on somebody else paying your wages. Yeah. However, yes. it's also very important because I've seen people making mistakes where, right, I'm going to start my business and then they leave their job. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> and, she's so and right. That, and you know, that yes. for me is one huge mistake because yeah, you need to have something coming in. You yeah. need to have that you know, that income, that mm -hmm. concrete income that comes in every month, mm -hmm. while you are working on your, your on your goals, That's, on yeah. your plans. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, as I said, many times I've seen people make that mistake of, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, ha I, having your own business is not for everyone. No. Not everyone's no. got that entrepreneurial no. mind. Because, no. you know, it begins up here. Yeah. Um, but also, because we, you know, we're in the UK, and for us Londoners, there's also there's so many different ways you can make extra money. I talk from experience. Things you can sell on eBay. You would be amazed Seriously. that you know you've got stuff in your wardrobe that you never wear again, but there's always someone who's willing to buy it at a price. And also, uh, what I've done this year, which I'd like to share, is I've sat down and had a really good look at my finances and my outgoings, and I've seen the amount of stuff that I pay for that I don't need to pay for. Yeah. So, which is a lovely way yes. of making extra money, cutting down on some things that you, you know, the kind of hidden things inside your bills and yeah. you just you know especially like, when it's direct debit you yeah. just pay for it and then yeah. you never question like sure, all those you have tv packages there, right all those you know? TV yeah, sorry packages. you 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 have a point there because that's exactly what i've been doing as well cutting out i i have to i had to sit back and really look at everything i was paying out and some of the things i thought I don't, don't need it. I don't need that. Why am I paying for this? Am, am I using it? Am I? No, cut, cut it yeah. off. Cut it off. So a lot and of the I times did that. It's all you need to do. Yeah. Just well, sometimes have to have a good bargain look at with the company because yeah. you know if you've been with the company for a long time, if you say to them that you're leaving, they will be more willing to bring your bill down. Definitely. And that's, that happened to very me. Very true. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's that. We hope that we've helped you with that question. We've we've got a very deep question now, and this one is about children and taking drugs. Um, I'm at my wit's end, this viewer was saying. My teenage son started not coming home all night for about six months now. Since then, his behaviour has slowly gone downhill. In trying to talk to him, it never gets any better. He gets really moody and starts storming out. And for a couple of days, I just don't see him. How can I find out if he's on drugs? Are there sites that I can go to? Where can I get help? Please help me. Well... I'm Maria. looking at Maria. Everyone looks at Maria. <laughs> okay, well, She's no, the mother I mean, of the family. I mean, it's a, a mother always, I, I believe, you know, I'm not saying knows, as in knows everything that her son is doing or yeah. her daughter is doing. That's impossible. However, you do know your, your children. You yeah. do know your, your, your child, yes? Mm -hmm. I mean, the first thing, obviously, because I mean, I, I do read about these things as well. You, you know, we have to get, we have to have experience on these things as parents as well. You never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very important that you, 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 you know your child. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You know your child comes in, hi, mom, you know, everything. But then there's that one day when your child comes in and, oh, hold on a minute, he, he didn't say hello. He's not mm -hmm. his normal self. Find out. Find out why. Mm -hmm. You know, because look at the signs. Look at things that he never used to do before, but he's now, he's starting to shout at you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not my son. He never shouted at me. Um, he's locking himself in the bedroom. And, you know, he's, as you said, going out, doing different things. The signs are there. Mm -hmm. There is no way a child who is taking drugs mm -hmm. that a mother is not able to tell. But what do you do? But you that's do just know. such a painful reality. Isn't it? It's very, I look, I mean, at the end of the day, we always talk about communication. Mm -hmm. And that is where you have to sit down with your child. Then they, mm -hmm. believe me, especially like children who's who's taking drugs, it's very rare that they would want to actually sit down and admit it. Mm -hmm. But you, as a parent, it's your duty. Sit down, talk, do everything you can, but don't brush it off mm -hmm. because it's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when it comes to drugs, especially when it comes it's to things like an addiction. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. You can't just say no. It's a phase. He'll get mm -hmm. over it. 
An addiction is not a phase, yes. it, it never is, it mm. never will be. It's something that you have to tackle, it's something that go seek help, even talk, go and, and, and you know, even suggest going to see profession, get, seek professional mm. help. Do mm. everything because mm. you as a parent, you have to, you have, to, it's your duty, it's our duty. Yes. We've got two parents actually who are presented on the show. We've got Samantha Dixon and Kim Powell who are part of two very, really, really well-established organisations. And I would like for you, if you are a parent going through things like that have been discussed now, got children, or you're worried about the drug issue, I know of two very good organisations that they are part of. They've told me a lot about them. I'm very inspired by their stories. And if you'd like to speak to them, feel free to email us at comments at dkw, um, comments at dkw mm. or, or visit our website, dkw.me. We can, you, what you can do there, you can go and make an appointment to see either of those ladies, even Maria herself, and they will be able to signpost you to these organisations which are free and they offer a world of advice for parents struggling with their children and for also drug issues, so please do that. We have a next question. Smacking children, so another one about children, um, smacking children, sorry. Hi, I'm interested to know your views on smacking children. I do not have any children of my own, um, but the other day, I, the other day, sorry, I witnessed a friend smacking her little boy and I was shocked and upset by it. I do not know if I've mentioned it to her or not. What do you think? Smacking children, yes or no? There's so many uh, things to consider. <laughs> yeah, I think culture is a big thing because in obviously within my culture, I was smacked as a child. Never did me any harm. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's sometimes I with my mum, it got to a point where obviously she did smack me as a child, and then it got to a point where she just had to give me a look, and then I thought I just don't want to get smacked, so yes. I behaved. Yes. You know, um, I'm not against smacking. Mm. I'm against abuse. Yes. I don't think abuse is right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hear about parents who are taking like hangers and wooden spoons and Bells. you know I have a friend who her mum I think uh, smacked her with a brush yes and put her face in bleach that's mm -hmm. abuse yes. you know and she spoke out about that I think but you know a smack for mm. me I'm not against it and if I was to have children which I don't want to but if I was going to have children I, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't smack them Maria did you smack your kids um, well, I have, I have. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to admit, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I've, I've never actually got, um, you know, got hit from my dad mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, the look was enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, my dad had this look that, oh gosh, you just <laughs> run, you run. But myself, yeah, I, I have to admit, I mean, I don't see, as Gemma was saying, you know, you're not going to abuse your children. Yes. You're not going to beat them. I mean, mm -hmm. never take a belt, never hit a child on the head. Mm -hmm. You know, you would not do that. It's your child. You don't do these things, you know, but you do have to discipline. Mm -hmm. And if you have to smack, you know, just a smack on the hand, mm -hmm. God, I mean, for me, I would do it. And I've done it. I have to admit, I've done it. You know, because at the end of the day, and it's, it hasn't done any harm, yeah. as yes. Gemma, yeah. you say to yourself, it doesn't do any harm. But obviously, they're here. It's a different thing altogether. Well, those are our views. What are yours? Please leave your comments on our Facebook page, A Different Kind of Woman, or email us at comments at dkw.me. Now, stick with us. We're going back to another short break. But please, stick with us to find out what else we're not afraid to say. Are you a duck? What can it do? It swims. It walks. It flies. But does it do them all well? Yes, a duck can do all of the above, but it's not known for being great at any. So, are you a duck? Rather than attempting to do all things, why not be the best at one thing at a time? You'll find you'll actually learn to be great at more things.
welcome back to DKW, A Different Kind of Woman, and we're in our final section. It's gone so quick, it ladies. It has gone very quickly. It has. All right, so yeah. we're answering your questions on today's show, and let's have a look at this video question. Why should we be judged on just that one exam when we've been working up, for it, up to it for so long? Oh, I've always asked that question, you know, but I've been out of education for so long, I couldn't care less, to be honest, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, do they, they still do that, only judge on one exam? I thought that it was like, you know, a bit of coursework was a percentage of it and then the exam was another percentage. It depends on the, it depends on, on the, the course, it depends on what you're oh. doing. Um, and sometimes it's like just coursework based and sometimes it is an exam, sometimes mm. it's a practical, it just depends on, mm. on what you're studying. Um, but the thing is, uh, some people really hate exams. I happen to love exams. I think they're <laughs> great. I hate coursework. Um, but, and I know people panic and mm -hmm. they get nervous. But the fact is, it's been like that for so long and they have tried to differentiate a little bit, but millions and millions have been judged on it. So you could just say, actually, it's fair that you're judged on it as well. It just yeah. shows how good you are or how good you aren't. And it also makes sure that it makes you have to kind of learn everything, isn't it? Because yeah. I think that's another thing. The thing yeah. about coursework is that, okay, you can show yourself through it, but it doesn't actually show that you've learned the whole exactly. thing. And I think that's exactly. the beauty of an exam. Yeah. You need to know everything because you, you don't do, know what you're going to be You just asked. don't know what you're going to be asked. And the other thing as well, with coursework, I find that a lot of the time, uh, moderators can't really take control of coursework because you could get help from somebody mm. really and truly yeah. because you do That's it within true. your own time That's Whereas in the exam point. room you've got no mobile no phone a friend no nothing unless you've got an <laughs> identical twin that is super bright you're gonna have to be in that exam yourself mm. and that is a test of how much you really do know and I know people panic a lot of the time and I would just say that if you do feel like you're not an exam person trying to invest in uh, techniques that will not make you panic because you, you know a lot more than you think you know a lot mm. of the time and they are fine exams when you get through them so would you say as well that exams are not just a test of what you know but a test of who you are definitely yes I think I think I think that's very very true I think it yeah. is I mean for myself I would prefer to sit an exam mm. rather than having to do the coursework because when I do actually have to come face to face with putting into practice I think the exam would help me more than the actual coursework would have done because as Gemma was saying, you know, I can't remember whether it was you, you Gemma or Shireen was saying that, you know, anybody can help you in the coursework. Yeah. I, I mean, I know I've helped a lot of women, mm -hmm. um, you know, in their childcare, mm -hmm. to, because I, that's what I studied. <laughs> yeah. And I know that, I mean, heaps of um, coursework, yeah. but I know I also helped a lot of women. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, which in, in a way I just, you think, well, did I help them mm. or, or what? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when you come face to face to do what you have to do, I think the exam will help you more because, it, as Gemma was saying, it's you and you alone there, yeah. Yeah. you know, nothing else. Also, the other part of it is what people don't understand is that the education system is set up to help you in future life. Yes. So you see, like, it's, you know, your GCSEs or passport to your A-level, whatever yes. you decide to do, but also the exam prepares you because if you don't know how to manage your nerves in an, in an exam how will you ever interview for a job yeah it's true do you see what i mean because an interview is an exam yes if you indeed. you know they test do you know your cv what do you what do you know about the job what do you know about the company it is like an exam we don't mm -hmm. call it an, an exam but someone is actually looking at you how much do you know about us what are you going to bring to this company uh, what have you learnt about this, that, and the other? So that is an exam, and well, if you your can't, whole life is an examination, your whole isn't life it? is an exam. You're meeting someone new, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, going on a date and he's sizing you up. At the end of the day, if you can't deal with pressure, which is yes. what an exam is, then you will not get through Absolutely. life very well. That's true. Will you? Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Very nice. <laughs> okay, true. I've got another very nice email from. Um, from a single mother, she's put here, I'm a single mother with two children. I have managed to run up a massive amount of debt without e them even knowing. Now my bank has cancelled all my cards and I cannot borrow anymore. I've moved to another address. I owe various credit cards, roughly around £9,000. So technically, I'm now hiding. What should I do? All right, ladies, how would you get this lady out of this very complicated situation? I, I think, I mean, um, it's very important, I would advise whoever it is, the, the person, get in touch with whoever she owns the money yeah. to. Get in touch because, I mean, you know, she's, she, she's a single mother. Mm -hmm. She has children. Yes. And a lot of them are very understanding, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I, I have to admit, there was a time in my life when I, I you know, I, as a single parent, I did get myself 
in, in, in today's. Yeah. But it, you'll be surprised. You will be surprised of how much help you can get out there. Mm. there are, most of them are very understanding. Call them. Don't ignore. Mm -hmm. Never, ever ignore your debts because mm -hmm. you are getting yourself in, in deeper, deeper debts. Mm -hmm. Face up to it. You know, okay, I owe this, this in this lady's case, 9,000. Yeah. Speak to them. Mm -hmm. Speak to them. You know, make them understand your situation. Tell them about it. You know, they can actually make a plan of how you can you could pay so much each Back, month. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to. You know, it, it, it. You don't have to leave it to the point where, okay, now you have to hide. You have to change your address. No, there's no there's no need for all that. Speak to the to the the people that mm -hmm. you owe the money to. Mm -hmm. Explain to them. Make arrangement. Make mm -hmm. arrangement yes, of how much. Yes. But also, mm -hmm. you know. Be very sincere. You're not going to say, you, okay, I'm going to give you £20 a, a month, a month yeah. when you know very well you're not going to be able to meet mm -hmm. that need. That need. Mm -hmm. So you have to be reasonable because the, the worst thing is you're going to say to them, you, you can give them £20. The end of the month come, you're not able to do that, then you will be getting into trouble. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, and, and if you feel like you can't, because it's fear, isn't it? Yeah, oh, they're going to shout at me. You, you feel like you're in that position. Because I remember when I was a student, I did exactly the same. I ran up all my credit cards, all my student credit cards, all my student loans, everything on clothes, shoes, etc. And I, I looked into a lot of advice and a lot of the time, you know, you don't even open the letters because you don't want to st stress out your yes, day. Yes. But um, when I actually looked into advice, I realised that number one, you can pay as little as a pound mm -hmm. towards a pound a month, even if you want to. And as long as you're paying a lot of the time, they will sort of get off your back. Mm -hmm. But if you ignore it, then that's when they're going to keep chasing. And then what do debt companies do? They sell your debt on to mm -hmm. other companies, debt collectors, and they sell it for a cheaper price. So mm -hmm. a lot of the time, which I didn't realise before until I started researching it, you can then make a settlement. So you won't end up paying that £9,000. Mm -hmm. You can say, this is what I can afford, let's settle and put it all in writing. If you can't mm -hmm. face somebody on the telephone, put it in writing, put in an email, put in a letter and say, this is what I can afford to pay. I'd like to settle, please. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time they will settle it. And then within six years, your credit history will hopefully, they say it's going to be like renewed yes. or something. And if you show that you're, you're good at paying your bills, then you can even uh, turn a corner in your financial life. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be like this. But the longer that she leaves it, yes. the more years that she has this on her credit file, it's going to affect everything. Mm -hmm. She won't be able to, to, to get a mortgage, for mm -hmm. instance. They will always look at that and it'll work against you. But the, mm -hmm. the quicker you sort it out, even if it's a small payment, the better mm -hmm. it looks for her. That's what I would say. And, she, and also, I mean, this is really, really great advice. I'm even learning things here for myself. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, she's got to have a look at why she's run up this debt. How yeah, did she run, yeah. run it up? Because yeah. every debt that you have, there's a reason why you have a debt. Definitely. That's the truth. Definitely. Maybe you've handled money not in the right way, or maybe it's just that you've got so many outgoings and so many little coming in that you don't have enough Definitely. so there's a reason it's she shouldn't she's kind of put herself in the in the mode of being like a criminal she's yeah. she's on she's running away she's she's on the run yeah. but you're not a criminal you just had to look at your and um, why how did I get into this what did I do was is that I'm not earning enough because she's yeah. a single mom she's yeah. got two kids yes. is that the reason and maybe she's missing out on the benefits that you can have yeah, as, as a single mom mm -hmm. with two children yes. and she's not aware yeah. so it's all, all about getting clued up about the things that that can help you but like you said running away from it is not going to solve the problem and I'm afraid that you're going to leave a bad uh, example for your children because if they, they're going to find out and they're going to think yes. in life oh, this is what I do when I have a problem I run from it and mm. if you're running away from this problem what else are you running away from yeah. so yeah. face it be a good example I mean at the end of the day this debt is not going to kill you but if you face up to it if you will come up with a solution if you really want it you're going to find a way of how to deal with it but I think she needs to really want to get out of it yeah. first and I'm thinking yes. even my goodness this is, is such an amazing it's a huge step for you to uproot yourself and find somewhere else if you can do all of that if you've got all that energy if you've got all that you know that drive to actually uproot yourself you can apply that same drive to solving it yes, I truly absolutely. believe that because um, the thing with uh, debts and things like this is it's like escapism isn't it so yeah. she's actually uprooted her whole family but is she escaping trying to escape the problem and maybe this is what she needs to search we don't know because we don't know her situation yeah. was she trying to escape from the stress the pressure of being a single mum mm. and then maybe living beyond her means mm. and that is something that then she needs to deal with because um, a lot of the time like for example when I was buying all my clothes shoes etc it was excess I didn't really need it but I was trying to escape something and live beyond my means and sometimes people do that so you've also got to deal with that issue as well.
There's a, there is always yeah. a deeper issue, isn't There's there? There's always a deeper issue. There is yeah. always, yeah. Well, actually, ladies, we're coming up to concluding the show. And, I, you know, I'm just so proud of these ladies that actually write in and yeah. share their yes. stories. I mean, we never expose their names. We always try to get back to them and, and give them um, organisations or people that can help them further, which is not what's broadcasted on this show. And this is what we love to do. We love to hear from people. Because if we sat here and said that we've got no problems and we've got all the answers, we'll be lying. But one thing about the different kind of woman is that we are different in the fact that we don't like to pretend. We don't like to do what society tells us to do, which is to hide and pretend to be like Oscar winning actresses that everything is always fine and have this beautiful smile. <laughs> no, we've got problems, let's share them so that we can start solving them because yeah. there's wisdom amongst sharing. What do you think, guys? Definitely, yeah. you know, what do they say? A problem shared is a problem halved. And you know, sometimes, it, like what I've learned from this show is a lot of the time you think you're the only person in that situation. <laughs> yes. And that's why you keep yes. it to yourself. You know, yeah. who hasn't put a, a letter that they don't want to open, like, you know, just pop, pile it away. <laughs> you know, people always think, oh, I'm the only one. And then yeah. they don't want to talk about it. But when you actually, like today, I've learned a lot about myself because I yeah. thought, gosh, all of these problems that I've heard, I've pretty much been in like the majority of them. <laughs> I was just about to say that. I was, I was just about to say the same thing, Gemma, because I've, I've actually identified Two, two problems <laughs> that we've spoken about. You know, we've spoken about, um, you know, about being a good friend, about the cheating if your partner, yeah. <laughs> hello, and um, the deaths, yeah. the last one which we just spoke yeah. about. So, yeah, we have been there. We have yeah. been there. We've overcome, yes. you know, we've faced up to our problems. We haven't ignored the problems. Mm -hmm. And to be able to, to help others now, in, you know, in such a huge way, yeah. it's really, really, it's, it's, it's great. And people it's need great. to understand that because you expose something doesn't make you a failure. Yes, indeed. Doesn't make you a loser. Um, because that is the thing, people think, oh, you know, if I, if I show my weakness, then that makes me a loser. No, mm -hmm. it doesn't actually. People who um, have overcome something and people who expose themselves and say, look, I need help. Yes. That takes a lot of humility. It but does. when you get over to the other side, Who's the one that's laughing? Yeah, you. Indeed. You're laughing. Indeed. And sometimes it does take that humility. Maybe you will go through a period of shame if you expose something about yourself. Like, look, I'm struggling with this. But, you know, what is better? Is it to, better to get the help and to overcome than to be in that situation for years and years and years? And that's what I have learned. Sometimes you're struggling with a problem for so, so long, thinking you're the only one in it, mm. thinking I'm not going to tell anybody, I can solve it, and you just can't. Yeah. And sometimes you do need that advice, that help from a friend. I've gone to friends so many times yeah. with different problems. What would you do? My family as well. And because you have that network, it makes you a better person. Indeed, indeed. It really and sometimes does. also, you know, I mean, the person will feel embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. Embarrassed. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, yeah, you're going to feel embarrassed, but think of the huge problem you'll be, you'll be solving. Yeah. It's so true. You know, us ladies, I think that, uh, that apparently it's scientifically proven that when we let out, let out something, we get this instant release. Yeah. Like, we just need to just let it out, like, just vomit it a out to someone. Just a good cry. Time. A good cry. Yeah. <laughs> just vomit it out. Cup of tea. Already, it's kind of like, you know, basically like what you were saying <laughs> is that when you share a problem, it's hard. But I truly believe that when you share a problem, you can, with an ear that is willing to listen to you, first of all, and not judge you, yeah. which is which is also very nice about contacting a D DKW because we don't know who you are, so we'll be non-judgmental. You can actually solve that problem. Mm -hmm. It's not only halved; it can be solved. Yeah, and yeah. Shireen, you are helping that person also because the person you're sharing with may in future have a huge problem. Indeed. And then she's going to think, well, okay, hold on a minute, let me go to Gemma. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and and so you are you're you're helping yourself, but at the same time you are helping that person as well. Very true. Thank Look, you. thank you so much, ladies. We're coming to the end of the show. It's been wonderful having you on. It's thank been you a so pleasure. much, ladies. It's been a pleasure <laughs> being here. And listen, if you would like also to have your problems shared or talked about on this program, feel free to email us at comments at dkw.me, or you can inbox us on our Facebook page, A Different Kind of Woman. Remember, we're always here. We're a heart to help and an ear to hear you. So have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.